goes the wind, in comes the rain. The rain then comes through the tree, through fall, hits the ground. Most of it stays within the first 15 inches. For every three inches of, of humus, we'll hold an inch of rain. Rarely do we get more than five inches in any one episode. <clears throat> Some of it stopped on the tree, slid through. Some of it stopped within 15 inches of the surface. So in a sense, when you look at a forest, it's a lake. The tree is 98% water, 96% water. It holds water in its root zone. It holds water in its leaves. It's a lake of some depth, 12, 14 inches deep. The carpet's the whole landscape. The forest is a lake. Only 60% of the tree is sticking out of the ground. 40% of it out of sight in the ground. That's a lake too. All these lakes have to be filled before water can move. Without the tree, that lake doesn't exist. And the soil has a capacity for water, um, which is that each particle of soil is coated by a film of water, uh, adhering to it at 15 atmospheres. And it's still adhering, not moving, uh, as it gets thicker down to four atmospheres, after which gravity starts slowly to move it down. So the soil, ha the, the, the plant has to satisfy uh, the moisture demand in the soil. When, it, when it's satisfied that, the soil is called, said to be at field capacity, you know. It's wet, but it won't let it go. And it holds it there. Well, trees can take that off. So again, uh, for some distance, whatever distance of crumb soil is, you know, it can be a metre or two metres or three metres. Water just goes in and stops there. If you dig in a swale, you get uh, water, fuel, uh, soil of fuel capacity. Go down, you know, the swale's old, go down 15 feet or something if you can dig that far. And suddenly you come to dead dry soil. There's a boundary is almost uh, a very narrow boundary between totally wetted and dead dry. So the water then comes through the tree, stops there, stops here, a lot of it, and then, then stops uh, down to the depth of the crumb structure, the, usually the end of a bee horizon in the soil, and then it infiltrates. The bit that infiltrates at 1.6% goes on down and forms your aquifers. And that's all you got. <laughs> Meanwhile, the tree starts working on the stored water to get it back in the atmosphere. And it came in at H2O8 in from the sea, isotope 18. It fell on the tree, it went into the soil, the tree pulls it out and sends it on as H2O16, a, a different isotope of oxygen. So when you, yeah, when you go in the cloud sometime, you're up there, and uh, put your thermos flask out the window and catch the cloud, bit of cloud, put the lid on, bring it back, you know, you very rarely find much uh, oxygen 18. And inland this far, none. All the, all the molecules and uh, oxygen evaporated from the sea uh, has gone. <coughs> and it's only the trees now that are humidifying uh, the atmosphere, that are the source of clouds. Now, if you're observant and busy around in plains a bit, sometimes you're out in deserts, you see a little tree down here, and there's a wind this way. Up here, there's a cloud. I've photographed it hundreds of times. One cloud, one tree, one tree, one cloud. If you leave a patch of trees, like people seem to do around here quite a lot, like that, you get a patch of cloud, like that. 
If you get a lot of trade, you get a lot of cloud. Uh, time and again, the cloud is a reflection of, a reflection of the you know, shape and quantity of trees below over which the wind's rising. And it's out front of the tree downwind. If you see uh, gliders, here's a cliff, here's a wind. Uh, hang gliders jumping out here. They stack out here like that, out there. <coughs> Because that's where your compression lines are. They can't get lift here. They can't lift, lift much lift here, but they get maximum lift out here. So it's like this, you know. You don't can't, don't get the cloud over the tree. You get it where the air bumps up, about the same place as you would get a hang glider. Um, you know, you like to dabble in esoteric things. Esoteric things. <laughs> <laughs> you should make it your business to get every book you can on gliding because there is no other set of literature so well informed about uh, cloud formation, condensation and lift. So that, you know, seeing the cloud, you can read this. Tapping into the rhizomes of wisdom you wove them all into a tale and with seeds in